Happy Sunday to you. This is Wayne Sutton. This is Second Adam TV, your online church. Welcome home. Welcome home to your online church where we bring the Word of God, we bring the prophetic ministry, and we believe that you are truly part of our prophetic portal here, our prophetic ministry, and we're going to teach on the Word of God today. We're in a new series that I'm really excited about. We'll get into the series in a moment. I'll make a few announcements. Amen. But we're talking about the supernatural, contending for signs and wonders today. We're going to have a sermon series. In the supernatural series, we're going to be talking about uh, healing the sick. We're going to talk about when the sick are not healed. We're going to talk about signs and wonders. We're going to talk about a lot of things about calling heaven down to earth. That is what we believe here at the secondadam.com. That's what we believe is possible for you as you are part of the secondadam.com. Now, we have our prayer request. We'll be going over in a few minutes. We'll be praying for. I want to say thank you for everyone that has subscribed to the Second Adam. If you're watching this and you haven't yet subscribed, be sure. Be sure to go to the secondadam.com. It's your name, email address, and subscribe. Let us bless you. Let us bless you with the ministry. Let us bless you with the secondadam.com. We'll have our weekly newsletter. We have our uh, video updates throughout the week. We have several resources and specials we want to be able to bring you. And, of course, the, the Sunday evening, the secondadam.tv sermon series. Now, Today, I want to talk about contending for signs and wonders, contending for the miracles. And see, I grew up in a Pentecostal church. I know that many of you have. I grew up in a church where signs and wonders were every every week part of the ministry many times. We were uh, spirit-filled. We saw a lot of miracles. Yes, we, were, we had some things that we were uh, really steeped in as far as legalism that we had to come out of. There's some things that every church, listen, you're not going to find the perfect church, but what you do is you find a church you can support, find a church you can believe in, and find one that you can grow in. Amen? And so I believe every church, though, every church, regardless of denomination or non-denominational, uh, orthodox or not, I believe every church should be a church of signs, wonders, and miracles. And that's what we're going to talk about today. And we're going to actually go into the book of Acts. Acts is the fifth book of the New Testament written by the physician Luke, and it chronicles both the birth and growth of the Christian church. And it's not only a history, but it's a blueprint. I want you to grab a hold of that. The Word of God shows us a blueprint of how we are to do church. We're going to talk about that. We're going to explore the first two chapters of Acts today, and I'm going to jump right in, Acts 2, 41 through 47. If you want to read along with me, you know, that's the beauty of an online church. That's the beauty of this video. You can click pause, go get the Word. Pull up another window on the computer and pull up the Word. We want to read from the Word of God, Acts 2, 41 through 47. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrines and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common. They sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. So, continuing daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of the heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Wow, look at this. We're going to go through some of the points here. If you're taking notes, guys, if not, click pause, grab some pen and paper, take notes on this. There's several things we're going to look at as we walk into the supernatural ministry. Number one, there was teaching. Now, a lot of people love the prophesying, the thus saith the Lord. A lot of people love the signs and wonders and miracles and shouting. Amen. I can get into all that as well. But here he's talking about the teaching, the apostles' doctrine. They talk about fellowship, breaking of bread. Many times we look at communion as simply a wafer and, and, and some grape juice or a little wine, but really breaking bread. When was the last time you really broke bread with people at your church, broke bread with people, sat down and had a meal with them? And then there was prayer. Now we're going to talk about prayer a lot in the second item. Then there was a sense of awe, it says, many signs and wonders. Signs point us to Jesus. And wonders, it calls us to wonder, what is this? What is this gold dust manifestation? What is this um, 
these beams of light, these that, you know, that we see. What is the Shekinah glory, the glory cloud? What are these things that many people have seen, but many people have not? Many people have recognized, but many people haven't. We're going to talk about signs and wonders. We're going to believe for signs and wonders. There was sharing and generosity. In fact, the word tells us they had all things in common. They had all things in common. They were generous. They shared. There was unity. There was one accord. There was gladness. There was sincerity of the heart. It was praising God. There was favor with the people and daily salvations. Think about this. Think about the church today and think about what we see here. Teaching, fellowship, prayer, sense of all, signs and wonders, sharing and generosity, unity, gladness. Sincerity of heart, praise in God, favor with the people, daily salvation. How does our church today compare to that picture? Let me give you a hint. We're not there yet. We need to go to another level. And that's where I am glad that you're part of the secondadam.com. Me and Candace are just glad to be able to bring this to you every week. And we want to bring this in this church, the online church, in your home church, wherever you're at. We want to bring this to you. Listen to me. This is the big idea, the big takeaway. Those who, if you follow us, as you follow us, you'll learn, I always want a big takeaway. I don't like 20-point sermons a lot or one-point sermons. So you can leave this church and go, wow, that was a good point, Pastor Wayne. The prophet Haggai said, the glory of the latter temple shall be greater than the former. Think about this. We hear that all the time. But let's really look at what the prophet was saying. The glory of this latter temple shall be greater than the former. Yet the last day's church that we're supposedly in is not greater than the first century church. Why not? We need to contend for the signs, the wonders, the miracles. Jesus said, you'll do greater things than I'm doing. Now, one of the greater things is uh, we can do this over the Internet. I know that once this sermon is uploaded, amen, and prayed over, we're going to send it out to countries all over the world. That's greater in one sense, but I want to see the signs, miracles, and wonders in your life. Think about this. Let's go back to Acts 1. Back to Acts 1, if you want to read with me, it's 1, 5 through 8. The former account I made, O Theophilus, is that Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up, after he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commands to the apostles whom he had chosen. Are you chosen? Amen. To whom he presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen during the 40 days and speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with him, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem. This is important, guys. But to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. The promise, not a promise. He didn't say, I'm going to wait for a promise. He said, wait for the promise of the Father. Wait for the promise of the Father. You've heard of me. For John baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Not many days from now, you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witness to me in Jerusalem, in Judea, and Samaria, and to the, all the ends of the earth. And Jesus declared, listen, Matthew 18, 16 said, I will build my church. This was his plan, to build his church, to build that ecclesia, you and I. And he said, to go do this to the disciples, wait until the promise of the Father. Today we say, well, hey, listen, you're, you're born again, great. Uh, maybe you can teach this class, or you're born again, great. Let's, uh, let's get you in seminary, get a degree on the wall, and then you can go and open the church, or you can go pastor a church. Jesus didn't say any of that. Jesus said, wait until the promise of my Father. If the, if the Father in heaven had a promise, don't you want it? Come on. He said, before you go and be the church, I need you to get the power. That's what Jesus said. He said, before you go and build and be my ecclesia, my church, I need you to get the power. And now the rest of the chapter, we see Jesus ascends to heaven. And what happens to the disciples? Did they go get a 12-step preaching program? Did they go to seminary? No, they go to the upper room. They go to the upper room. I love. We almost called this, this uh, the second Adam.tv, the upper room ministry, because we're literally in the upper room of this uh, establishment, and we're recording this in the upper room. This is our sanctuary. Amen. But they were in the upper room. It wasn't the upper room that gave them power. It was unity that gave them power. Listen to me. It was the Holy Spirit. What was the first thing the church did together? All my Acts one fourteen said they continually devoted themselves to prayer. 
continually devoted themselves to prayer. And it wasn't that one was praying and one wasn't. They were together in one accord praying. And they prayed for 10 days, guys. Come on. When was the last time somebody asked you to pray for 20 minutes and you got five minutes into it and your mind was elsewhere? When was the last time you truly prayed for 10 minutes? What about 10 days? Now I know they were taking, uh, they had to eat, and they had to sleep and things went on, but they stayed in unity, in the unity of the mind for prayer for 10 days. And what happened? Oh, this is, this is awesome. The Spirit of the Lord fell upon them. If you're going to contend for signs and wonders and miracles, if you want to see people healed, you want to see people set free, you must be endued with the Holy Spirit. You must be empowered and filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes, that is going to be a big theme in the thesecondatom.tv because I believe in it. Now, a fire should always be burning on the altar. It shall never go out. We see that in Leviticus. In Proverbs 26.20, it says, where there is no fuel, the fire goes out. Now, both of these references are talking about a literal fire, but it's also a spiritual reality. We need to stoke the fire, our love, our passion for Jesus, our love for one another. If you're watching this video going, amen, Pastor Wayne, great. But who needs to see it besides you? Can you click the share button? Come on. How are you watching this? On YouTube, Facebook, Vimeo? Where are you at? Click the share button. Let somebody else know. Let somebody else get empowered. Amen. Prayer is the key. This happens in a place of prayer. They prayed. They didn't fast. Maybe they did. We don't see that they fasted for 10 days. They didn't go to a 10-day conference. They went to the upper room. I guess that's a conference. They were conferencing together for 10 days. The passion for Jesus. He is our Lord, and we need what he, what he promised us. The promise. Let me ask you, if Jesus Christ came to you and said, I want to give you a promise. In fact, I want to give you the promise from my Father in heaven. Would you, would you be like, okay, I'm ready? Well, he did. This is what he promises you and I in his word is the power of the Holy Spirit. Acts 2. We're going to jump in Acts 2, um, 1 through 4. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were with all in one accord. And suddenly came out. Oh, I love this. A sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them tongues of fire. One sat upon each one of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Holy Spirit gave utterance. Now, we are going to be talking about the Holy Spirit. We're going to be talking about the gift of tongues, interpretation of tongues. We're going to be talking about that in another sermon. But for this sermon, I want you to grab a hold of this. Fire, when you see the fire of God in scriptures, is a symbol for the presence of God. When we're praying over people, I've, I've prayed for people, and it's just, you know, you pray, the, may the fire of God come upon you. Even as you're watching this, may the fire of God come upon you right now. May you feel His presence. Yes, this is a video church, an online church, but can you feel the presence of God? The fire. Why did God show up in a powerful way to ignite His church, to start that church in the upper room? Why did He do it? Because they were asking Him. Think about that, guys. When was the last time you said, Lord, Send your fire upon my life. Send your fire inside of me. Burn me, Lord. Burn me with your holy fire. Amen. When the Lord, listen to me, and the Lord, whom you will seek, will suddenly come to his temple. Malachi 3 1. We go into Old Testament to see the promise of the New Testament. And the Lord, whom you seek, it said, whom you seek, that's the key word, will suddenly come to his temple. We can't be content where we are. We must go for the signs and wonders. I grew up in the church and I saw the glory cloud. I saw people pray in tongues and interpretation of tongues. I saw people get healed. I saw people do the supernatural that many people wouldn't even believe if they didn't see it with their own eyes. I saw the glory cloud more than once. Here's the key, guys. We owe that to today's generation. We owe that to your children, your grandchildren. We owe it. If you're young and you're watching this, you need to see the raw power of God. Why? Because God is good. He wants to bless you. He wants to show his signs and wonders. We see it all throughout the Word. Now, it says in verse 7, the world was amazed and astonished. Peter preached. This is what. This is the prophecy. This is what was going to happen. You know, the dreams and the visions Amen. The signs and the wonders. This is what was prophesied, and they saw it outpouring. And listen, here's the here's what I love about it. Oh, yes, they spoke in tongues, and people were amazed. I love all that. Amen. But the best part is 3,000 people were saved that day. About 3,000 souls were saved. In fact, I truly believe, if you look at this, this was the first formation of the church. Many people say, well, how should we run church today? 
Should we have, as Robert Bufkin used to say, should we have a tongue-talking church here and a non-tongue-talking church here, a signs and wonder church here and a non-signs and wonder? Of course not. Because why? We see the blueprint here. The Spirit of God came. They spoke in tongues. They began to have dreams. They began to have visions. The prophetic woke up in reality in their life. And they were on fire. They were saving souls for the kingdom. People said, they're drunk. Look at them. They're drunk. It's early in the morning. They're already drunk. He said, they're not drunk as you suppose. This is the fire of God, the promise of the Father that was prophesied to them. So as we go through this sermon series on the supernatural, we're going to talk about healing the sick. We're going to pray for people to be healed. I believe even as you watch this, there'll be people set free of terminal diseases. There'll be people set free of arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis. There'll be people set free of diabetes. If you believe that, say, amen, send your fire. I believe that because I've seen people healed. I've seen the blind eye open. I know what God can do, and I know we're going back to that. We're going back to that through the second item about TV. So if, if, if signs and wonders bother you, if somebody talking in tongues scares you, or offends you, hang on, keep on watching. You'll be scared, offended, and blessed in Jesus' name. If it excites you, saying, Lord, I want what is true. I want the true gospel. Then that's what you're going to find here at the thesecondadam.com. So, having said that, we are going to pray um, here in a moment. I'm going to pray for the prayer request that came in. Amen. We're going to pray for you as you're watching this. If you've never prayed in tongues before, if you've never been filled with the Holy Spirit, one of the, uh, we see that evidence of tongue, evidence of the infill of the Holy Spirit is tongues. It's one of the ways that he uh, is evidence. Now, and we'll get into is that the only way again. This isn't a teaching on tongues, but if you if you said, Pastor Wayne, I want more. I want more. Amen. Then I want you, to, I'm gonna pray for you. I'm gonna pray for a fresh infill. And some of you spoke in tongues 20 years ago and you've spoke nothing but negativity since. You need a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We leak. Amen. The Bible says from glory to glory. You've heard me say that. It's a in it's a, always a constant transformation growing. So and our Bible also says, listen. Seek ye all spiritual gifts. And Paul was saying, seek the spiritual gifts. Guess what one of the gifts is? Tongues. Guess what another one is? Interpretation. Words of wisdom. Words of knowledge. The working of miracles. But Paul said to seek all, especially the gift of prophecy. The devil hates prophecy. But guess what? It's what encourages and builds up the church. Now, before we go into that, before we go into praying for the prayer request, I just want to say thank you again for all of you that have followed this ministry so far. Listen, we've reached hundreds of people in the last few weeks. We're going to reach thousands. Um, I, I'm just so excited what's coming next. Amen. So here's what I need from you. I need you to pray about being a partner with us. Pray about partnership with us, partnering with the prophetic, partnering with an online church. Those who are sending in your love offering, your tithes, we honor you, we appreciate you, but there is a partnership. I'll have a link with this video. There's three levels. Choose a level. Be blessed. Be blessed. I've talked to people this week and said, I'm so glad to be a partner with you, Wayne. And we're able to, it's the one-on-one -on -one ministry. It goes beyond the video here, and it goes to me and you working together. Me and you truly mentoring and coaching you into new levels of discipleship. So pray about it. We really do honor your love offering, your tithes. Help us take this ministry into all parts of the world. Now, if you send in your prayer request, I'm going to ask you to also send in your praise report as you listen. I looked at today on the side. I'm not going to read them now to you. But go to the second Adam and look on the praise reports. It, I was blown away. Look at the on the uh, counseling testimonies and just read through. Just read through. Sarah, you know who you are? I loved reading your praise report. I bless you in the name of Jesus. I'm asking God for even more. She had a financial breakthrough just after a prophetic word I released over her to find next day a big financial breakthrough because I believe God honors his word. He says he sent the word out and the word did the work. Amen. Let's pray over these. We have prayer requests coming in from all over the world. And I'm telling you, I believe in right now as I release this prayer and as you agree with me that the fire of God, that Holy Spirit is going to fall upon every one of these. The angels of healing and ministering angels are going to go forth and minister over these prayer requests. So in the name of Jesus, I call forth healing. I call forth identity revelation. I call forth that the hand of God, the fire of God would come upon every one of these people, every Every prayer request and that they would be handled, that they would be answered, that healing would manifest, that virtue would come forth upon everyone right now. If you're watching this, you need prayer, just say amen. 
hold your hand up, lay your hand on the screen, do whatever you need to do, lay your hand on yourself and just agree with me. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak forth the will of God in your life, that heaven upon earth in your life now, even as, even as you watch this sermon, may the fire of God come upon you. Sickness be gone in Jesus' mighty name. Bodies, we command you to come into alignment with the perfect will of God for healing to manifest in Jesus' name we pray. Uh, Lord, I ask you, in their life, even as they watch this sermon, as it is in heaven, perfection come, amen and amen. Guys, I honor you. I bless you. Next week, next Sunday, 9 p.m., be sure to check with us. Not only put in your prayer request. In fact, let's do that first. If you're watching this, go to the secondadam.com. The place says need prayer. Place your name, your prayer request. Let our prayer team pray for you. It goes directly to my mobile phone, my chaplain's mobile phone, and then we're able to print them out. We're able to pray over them live as we pray over them throughout the week. And here's what's really great about that. We've seen miracle after miracle, and I believe more are coming. Now, next week, next week, tell somebody. Tell somebody. Say, hey, you've got to watch Pastor Wayne next week. You've got to be on the secondadam.tv. We are going to be talking about healing. How do we bring forth healing? Should we pray for healing? Should we command healing? What does the Bible say about healing? What about those who are not healed? Do you need healing in your body? I'm telling you, I believe you can be healed right now, even watching this. But what if you're not? What about next week coming on board and say, listen, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask somebody to fast. Fast throughout the week. Pray. Just spend time with the Lord. Say, Lord, next Sunday at 9 p.m., I'm receiving my healing. I believe your miracle is a prayer away. Amen. I believe that. So we're going to be talking about healing on the Supernatural Sermon Series here at the TV. Now, I bless you, I honor you. I'm going to give you a few announcements. Number one, stick around at the end of this video. We've got some worship music. Just worship with us. Again, if you're watching this on YouTube, there's some share buttons below. Click the button, share it, let other people know. If you're on Facebook, you know how to share on Facebook, obviously. Click like, click share. If you're watching this on any other media format, just share it, let other people know. And if you have yet to subscribe to The Second Adam, go to thesecondadam.tv or thesecondadam.com. The link's right below me. And make sure that you place your name and email address and get on board with us. Also, you can find us on YouTube and you can find us on facebook.com forward slash The Second Adam. We want to bless you. We want to honor you. That's our purpose here. That's what we want to do. We want to be a blessing to you. By the way, I didn't mention it last week, but for my podcast listeners, those who love a podcast, if you want a, more of a daily information from us as well, go to straighttalkwithwayne.com. You can find us on iTunes, Straight Talk with Wayne Sutton, or you can go to straighttalkwithwayne.com and subscribe and be sure to get our daily podcast where we bring prophetic revelation and prophetic Christian news to you. Now, I'm ending the sermon today. I pray this has been a blessing to you. You've been a blessing to me. As I said, be sure to help us with your partnership, tithes, love offerings, and to be sure to read. Go and look at the counseling testimonies. Look at the praise report. Sometimes I can look at a praise report. I can look at a testimony and go, wow, if you did it for them, God, you can do it for me. Amen? That's what we love here at the thesecondadam.com. And listen, next week, some big news for my for our uh, internet TV users. We are working on having our own Roku channel. I was actually going through setting some things up today. So you'll be able to watch us on Roku here shortly. Pray that we have enough wisdom, discernment, and finances to make it a reality. But it looks like we're going to be on Roku very soon. So again, this is Pastor Wayne. We honor you. We bless you. And until next week, God bless. Through you, I can do anything I can do all things Cause it's you who gives me strength And nothing is impossible Through you, blind